Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part six of the $4,000 Ultimate No Compromise Computer Build video series. What is this? Overclocking. Now, if you are new to this series, all of the previous videos will be linked in the video description below. Part one was a parts overview, parts review. Part two was a long vlog explaining why this machine got built, what everything is being used for, the decision making behind the process, etc. Part three was the build. Part four was Windows installation with driver updates, BIOS updates, and firmware updates. Part five was Windows performance review, and part six is overclocking. Coming up is going to be Windows, um, excuse me, game performance testing. I'm gonna be doing both one graphics card and two in SLI. Um, hard drive testing, SSD performance review. I'm going to be doing a video rendering test, 3D animation test. I'm gonna be doing a lot of different videos on this. So if you're not subscribed, click that big red subscribe button down there and subscribe to get notifications of future videos. It doesn't cost anything, so click that button now. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos, by all means, go check them out in the video description below. But this video is all about overclocking. First of all, let me say up front that this video didn't turn out the way I was planning. My original intention for this video was to do this live. Start the camera, turn it on, go into the BIOS, change some settings, and go through it step by step. Um, run the automatic overclocking software, show you how that worked, and then take all that footage and edit it down into something watchable. I've now been out this for seven and a half hours. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, in fairness, an hour and a half of that has been stress testing. I spent six hours messing with it and it's now an hour and 39 minutes into ADA 64 stress. And it's stable and the temperatures are great. So here's what we're going to do instead. I'm first gonna start off and tell you what I recommend, what I think you should do. Then I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do all the other choices. Now, you're free to disagree with me and do whatever you want. Your computer, your hardware, do anything you want. I'll tell you what I did to get to this point after I tell you what I think you should do. So this is my recommendation. Having spent six hours running the software, trying different settings, trying different voltages, stress testing, having the machine crash more than once, playing around with it, here's the conclusion I came to. I believe that if you want this level of performance, if you want the six core enthusiast platform, the X99 with quad channel RAM and all the features that come with this level of system, I believe that you should buy the ASUS X99-A2 motherboard or the ASUS X99 Strix gaming board if you want the RGB lighting. It's basically the same thing with a couple more features, Wi-Fi, RGB lighting, etc., different color scheme. I believe you buy the i7-6800K. Don't buy the others. That was explained in video number two as to why the others aren't a good value, but buy this one. Buy either a Corsair um, H100i or an H115i liquid cooler. Why the two? The H100i is 240 millimeter. It's two 120s. The H115i is 280 millimeter or two 140s. If you have a different case that doesn't support the 280 millimeter, then get the 100, it'll be fine. They're pretty close. But if you have room for the, for the big one, then by all means get the H115i. Put them in the system and run it where I've got it, which is at 4.2 gigahertz. I've had this faster. I got about 30 minutes of stress test out of it faster, but too much voltage, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But before I do that, in case you don't wanna watch this entire video, if you just want the answer, here's what I'm going to do. And all future videos you see on this computer will be at these settings. I am running at 4.2 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. This stress test has been running for over an hour and 40 minutes and the CPU's average temp in ADA 64 is 58.8 degrees. That's not hot. That is very reasonable temperature. My fans are running at 840 RPM. This is hardly even hot. The heat coming out of the top of the case, I have the radiator exhausting upward, is very minor. I mean, I could leave my hand here all day. This would not even warm up my coffee. No, you should not put your coffee on your computer, but the fans are running, well, they were at 840, now it's 900 RPM. It bounces between 840 and 900. The noise from this, very little. Now, sitting on the desk, I can hear it. I am, 
I'm close to it. There are six fans. There's a radiator pump in here. It does make noise. Put this under your desk. Very, very quiet. Furthermore, it doesn't make much noise when you're not running all the cores maxed out. I mean, I have been running this maxed out now for an hour and 45 minutes. So when you're not doing this level of stress testing with everything at 100%, it's even more quiet. But as it stands, it's very, very quiet. I recommend that you buy all the stuff I mentioned, and then you simply set your clock multiplier to 42 in the BIOS, which I'll show you in a minute. Set your RAM to whatever you bought. In my case, I bought DDR4-3000. I bought memory that was on the qualified vendor list for the motherboard. Everything synced up, the timings were all correct per the RAM. Uh, Zeus has actually tested this specific uh, kit of memory in this system. It worked perfectly. We're running at 3000, no issue. Leave everything else on auto and be happy with your computer. It will run fine. The motherboard auto sets the voltage higher. And I have played around with this as well. I've raised it and lowered it. I've spent a lot of hours on this. What I've discovered is that while 1.3 volts uses a little more power and makes a little more heat than 1.22 or 1.25, not much, but it gives you a more stable system. It, it gives you a larger margin for stability. And with this level of cooling, heat is simply not an issue. And I am more interested in an absolutely stable system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot the machine and show you the BIOS settings that I just mentioned. And then I'm going to talk about all the other things I did for six hours and why I don't think you should do them. But if you don't want to hear all that and you just want to know what I recommend, then you'll be done with the video at that point. So let's go ahead and stop this test. That got a whole lot more quiet. As soon as I took the load off the CPU, the pump quieted right down. The fans quieted down. Wow, what a difference. There it is, it's slowing down now. I can hardly hear it. That was quick. Okay, so we're gonna do start, restart. Let me show you the BIOS settings. And here we are in the system BIOS. Now, the first page that comes up in the BIOS is easy mode. We don't want to use easy mode. We want to use advanced mode. Now, of course, if you buy a different motherboard, this is going to look different, but generally it operates on the same principle. You do have the option, and normally I would advise this. I use this on my own systems at home. If you come off to the left-hand side, the very far left side of the screen, you will see XMP mode. If you choose XMP mode, it sets your DDR4 to your memory, which in this case is 3000. The problem is it also changes some other settings. And this, I don't know if it's the RAM or it's unique to the X99 platform because I only have one of these. But after playing around with it, I don't recommend you use XMP. XMP, by the way, stands for Extreme Memory Profile. It's an Intel technology designed to have memory chips let the system know what they're supposed to run at. But the reason I don't recommend you use it is because XMP in this case changed the base clock to 125 and you don't want to do that. It messes with temperature reporting. It messes with Intel's power saving features. You have an overclockable chip. There's no reason to run a base clock of anything but 100. So I'm going to switch that back to disabled and we're going to press F7 to go into advanced mode. Press the right arrow key once and we're going to come over here to the AI tweaker. AI Overclock Tuner, you have three options, Auto, Manual, and XMP. We're gonna put it into Manual Mode. You'll see here the CPU strap says 125. Don't do that. There's no reason to with a CPU like this. Set that to Auto. Leave everything else to Auto. Base clock is at 100. Come down to CPU Core Ratio. Sync All Cores, which is what it should be set to, but if it's set to Auto or anything else, set it to Sync All Cores and then come down to the one core limit ratio. In fact, I'll scroll down just so you can see them all. What you want to do is you simply want to type a 4-2 in there and press enter, and it will change all of your cores to 42. 42 times 100 is 4200 or 4.2 gigahertz or 4200 megahertz. Now, it will not run at 4.2 gigahertz all the time. The power saving modes, the, uh, the uh, Intel speed step where it um, slows the CPU down to save on power and lowers voltage, those will work correctly, don't worry. So we set it to 4.2. 
we're going to leave everything else to auto, but we're going to come down here to DRAM frequency. And we're going to manually set that to DDR4 3000. These are the exact settings I was running at when I had the um, A to 64 running for almost two hours without a problem and temperatures of under 60 degrees on the CPU. TPU leave current settings, power mode, uh, EPU power saving mode disabled for overclocking. Now, some of you are going to ask, what about CPU core voltage? Leave it at auto. At auto, on this board, it should set it to about 1.3 volts, which is just fine. Interestingly enough, this board scales voltage with your clock multiplier. If you leave it in auto and you set it to 4.0, it runs it at 1.22. If you set it to 4.4 gigahertz, it runs it at 1.42, which is where I got my 1.42 at. It was stable at 1.42 at 4.4 gigahertz. I did it for about 20, 25 minutes in A to 64, but I thought about it and I decided that 1.42 volts was too much for my taste. I lowered the voltage to 1.35 manually at 4.4 gigahertz and I reran A to 64 and it crashed. So it was stable at 1.42, but it was not stable at 1.35 at 4.4. So leave it at auto at 4.2 at 1.3 volts, 99% of these should be stable at 1.3 volts at 4.2 gigahertz. Yes, you can absolutely play with it more if you want to, but two hours of A to 64, cool temperatures, I'm happy enough with that. That is a really good overclock. Now, the only other thing that I need to change, and that's only because XMP changed it, is min CPU cache ratio and max CPU cache ratio. Those were set to 25. Those should both be set to auto. At this point, press F10 to save changes. Now, you have not made any changes to the BIOS settings. Why? That's what I was running at. When I set it to XMP, it changed the settings around. But all you can see here is that all I did was set the settings back right to where they were. Now, before I go ahead and do that, there's nothing to save because where I'm at, can you set this to 4.4 and get 4.4400 gigahertz or 4.4 gigahertz? Yes, a lot of voltage. Are you okay with that? Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it'll run for years at 1.42 and it won't matter. That's for you to decide. However, that's a lot of extra voltage considering what the default is on this chip. Consider this, at 4.2 gigahertz, if you have a video render that's going to take an hour to run and you bump your clock speed from 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz and assuming everything scales perfectly, how much time do you think you'll save off of your video render by going from 4.2 to 4.4? Three minutes on an hour render. On a 10 hour render, it's 30 minutes. Now 30 minutes sounds nice, but what are you doing a 10 hour render for? If you do a 10 hour render, it's overnight. I, what are you gonna do, sit there and watch it for 10 hours and go, well, if this was only nine and a half hours, this would be great. Just to put that into perspective, the difference between 4.2 and 4.4 is three minutes per hour of render time. You are running more than a whole extra 10th of a volt on your CPU for three minutes. I'm not willing to do it. Now, some of you may say, but why don't you push this harder? Can't you get 4.5 or 4.6 out of it? Yeah, I'm sure I could if I didn't care about how long my CPU lasted. And this is a very important point. This is not a test chip that Intel sent me. I bought this. This is not a test machine that I'm just leaving in the office to do benchmarks with. This is my personal computer that I'm gonna put under my desk at home and leave for years. Long-term stability is more important to me than another 4% overclock or 4.5%. So the 4.2 gigahertz at 1.3 volt is where I'm gonna be running it. That's where you'll see all the future benchmark tests. That's where the Windows Performance Review will be run in. Will be? Yes, that's right. This is part six. Windows Performance Review is part five. I haven't filmed it yet. I'm doing them in reverse order because I wanted to get the overclock out of the way. And I'll mention that at the beginning of the Windows Performance Review so that it would be run where it should be run at. Again, if you're buying one of these chips, and you run it at stock speeds, you're doing it wrong. Seriously, it's, there's no reason to spend this kind of money and get a 3.4 gigahertz CPU. 
for all of my previous comments about how the i7 6700 6800k is the best i7 choice those are all assuming you run it at 4.2 gigahertz if you run it at 3.4 then it isn't so as far as what else you should do, let me talk to you about the AI Suite 3, which I can't show you because I've uninstalled it now. I had it. I ran it. It crashed repeatedly, which is interesting because I've run it successfully on both of my i7s at home. But it was not run on Windows 10 Anniversary Edition, which was just released about a month and a half ago, and it's possible that's causing the problem. It's possible that some new driver or some new update with Windows is causing the problem and Azus hasn't updated it yet. Or maybe it's just me. But I set everything back to the default. I set AI Suite with the automatic overclocking to run and it got through two reboots and then it just started crashing the machine. And it was crashing the machine at 4.0 gigahertz, not even a 4.2 or 4.4 and I don't know why. It runs fine on manual. The automatic overclocking software did not run. I uninstalled it, went back to this, and as you saw at the beginning of this video, it ran absolutely perfectly for almost two hours without any issue. And of course, if I do have any issues in the future, I will mention them in those videos and talk about it. But if you watch the Windows performance review and game performance reviews and video render tests and you don't hear anything else about a problem, 4.2, 24-7 without an issue, or at least 24-7 as it gets on my test bench. Um, so I don't recommend, at least until an update occurs, that you run the automatic overclocking, and I would just do the settings that I put in there. What you do is up to you, but that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I think most people should do. Now, if you say you want to get the most overclock, if you say you want to understand what all these settings are, my lord, there are so many settings that you can come in here and tweak. If you go to um, overclocker.net, if you go to the forums, and I'll put a link to that, there's a huge 300 plus page thread, yes I did spend time reading some of it, on Broadwell Ian there, there are people who spend days overclocking their system to get the last 50 megahertz out of it. My time's worth more than that, quite frankly. I mean, if you've got nothing else to do and you think it's a game, if you find it fun to go through these settings to get your last 50 megahertz, Knock yourself out. I'll put a link to that huge 300 plus page thread at overclocker.net. There is a wealth of information. I don't believe that most of you should mess with it. Take the easy path because let me tell you, when you change these couple of settings, two hours, stable run, 58.8 degrees after an hour and about 45 minutes, on 8 to 64 on a full run and you can test your own system as well I'll put a link to 8 to 64 in the video description below you can go download a 30-day trial and run it yourself and um, see how well it runs so did you like this video click like did you not don't remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button right down there questions comments thoughts will be in the comment section if you leave them and then of course as always check out my video description for the links to all the other videos on this computer and the links to amazon and newegg where i bought all this stuff and so should you thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next video